So let's talk share them. Um, and I'm going to start this by actually um, mentioning that when I took a tour with Frank Riley at Spotsylvania um, Wilderness, he had some very very choice words to say about Sheridan with regard to his um, abilities as a commander, as a cavalry commander, especially. Mm -hmm. But um, that aside, how does he fare in the valley um, militarily, but then especially with light to um, the enforcement of emancipation and the formerly enslaved? Yeah, so I mean, Sheridan, you know, he, he fights the campaign, the, you know, the final major campaign in the Valley, what he's able to achieve, you know, in a, in a one month time span from September 19th to October 19th, third Winchester, Fisher's Hill, Tom's Brook, and of course, Cedar Creek. I mean, that's, that's, that's the thing that finally rests the Valley from, from Confederate control. And one of the things that, that sometimes is, is lost sight of when you look at at Sheridan's victories in the Valley that also helped, you know, Lincoln get reelected is you can make the argument. And I make this, or I try to make the argument, hopefully I did a, a decent job of it in the book is much of his success hinged on uh, an African-American man, an enslaved man from Millwood, Virginia, Thomas Laws. Um, you know, so you have that first month of Sheridan's command tenure where there's a lot of, you know, maneuvering between Harper's Ferry and Fisher's Hill, and he's under enormous pressure from President Lincoln and Ulysses S. Grant saying, you know, we want you to go after early. Uh, we want you to win, but don't attack him unless you can be assured of victory, because if you lose, Lincoln's going to lose reelection. And so, you know, Sheridan was, was again, pretty cautious. And then you get to this moment in mid-September and Lincoln's, you know, writing Grant saying, okay, this is all well and good. I'm glad he hasn't brought on a major engagement, but uh, he still has to do something with this army of 40,000 before the election. And so when Sheridan felt this pressure, um, he receives a, a letter from Grant saying, you know, I'm going to meet you in Charlestown on September 17th, be there. And that's kind of it. Um, and, and, you know, if I receive a note from my boss, my dean saying, hey, come to my office and there's no explanation, I'm automatically in my mind starting to imagine this horrific scenario where I'm going to get fired um, and bad things are going to happen. And Sheridan knew he had to go to this meeting in Charlestown with a plan. And so the, the person who carries information from a unionist uh, supporter in Winchester, Rebecca Wright, who was a young Quaker school teacher in her, in her early 20s, the person who carries the messages back and forth is Tom Laws. And, you know, had it not been for Tom Laws being, you know, courageous to be this messenger, right. going to Rebecca Wright, and then when Rebecca Wright said on the 16th of September, yeah, I really don't want to help you because I'm concerned what would happen to me if it was found out, and Laws basically calms her down and, and says, you know, you need to think about what helping will mean to the, to the union cause here in the Valley. So, I mean, Laws is a, is a significant figure. Uh, I would argue in in Sheridan's ultimate plan and his and his ultimate success. If you don't have that information, you know things are are maybe not going to work out as they did. With that being said, um, you know as Sheridan moved throughout the valley, he did offer refuge um, to African Americans who sought protection with the federal army. There's a, a number of of his soldiers who write about this, but one of the things that Sheridan does not do is he does not encourage his soldiers to protect the property of African-Americans. Mm -hmm. And so there, there are these instances through Southern Claims Commission records, it's, it's borne out, where you have Sheridan soldiers are, are taking things mm -hmm. from you know, free Black families or individuals who are once enslaved, and they're saying, well, tough luck, we need them. Right. And, you know, these are people who don't have a great deal to begin with, and soldiers are just taking them because they can, wow. and there's no evidence that, that Sheridan intervened here um, on their behalf. And so I don't see, you know, with other generals who come prior to Sheridan, I don't see that same sort of attitude. I mean, Sheridan, I, I think, comes across as very nonchalant. We're going to protect them, but ultimately, if, if they have chickens or whatever, and you want them, just go and take them. Right. 
Wow. That, that is pretty sad to think about. Yeah. As a situation.